Well, well, my last video sure, certainly got a lot of uh, views. Uh, sometimes my videos get linked onto Reddit or some other sites and people come and watch for the first time. Now, unfortunately, when they come and watch for the first time, they don't quite understand what it is I'm saying. What I'm trying to tell you is a message from scientists, climate scientists, and, uh, and other scientists that are trying to put the word out. And I'm trying to say it in a more simplified way so that anybody can understand it. Now, other scientists and professors, such as Paul Beckwith, put out a video on climate change, and they say it in a much more scientific way. Well, some people just get bored with that, and they click off without understanding what they're trying to say. So mine's more simplified for those that need simplification of what's going on with our environment. And what I'm going to do is this is kind of a two-part video. The first part is I want to talk about permafrost and what's happening up in Alaska. This is very important. And uh, so let's go there first, and then we're going to talk about science and uh, why it is so important. There are dozens of rivers and streams in Alaska that are turning rust orange. This is due to thawing permafrost. The Arctic is the fastest warming region on the globe. As the frozen ground below the surface melts, minerals once locked away in the ground are now seeping into the waterways of Alaska. It's an unforeseen impact of climate change that we're seeing in some of the most pristine rivers in the U.S. The permafrost thaw is exposing minerals to the oxygen in the process known as weathering. It's also known as rusting, such as when you have an iron bar outside in the rain, and you come out the next day and it's all rusty looking. That's weathering to an extreme. That's a very fast form of weathering. This increases the acidity of the water and dissolves metals like zinc, copper, cadmium, and iron into the water, turning it orange. This highlights the potential degradation of drinking water and the risk of fish in the Arctic rivers. So the fish are suffering from this and the people that drink this water are suffering from this. Cadmium? You don't want to be drinking cadmium. The phenomenon was first observed and started in 2018. So now we have some time that we've started to see the water turning orange and to now where it's severely orange. So that means that the permafrost in the Arctic is melting faster and faster and deeper and deeper. And these minerals are seeping out into the rivers of Alaska. Now let's look at some of the pictures of what's happening in Alaska. As you can see with your own eyes that this water is orange, full of chemicals that shouldn't be there. This water should be crystal clear. It's one of some of the most pristine waterways in the U.S. and in the world was some of the most pristine. This was an unforeseen consequence. We did not predict this. Science didn't see it coming, but it came anyway, and it's a part of global climate change. Now, the second part of this video is talking about the comments I got on my last video, which was a lot of, there were a lot of good comments, but a lot of bad comments about why do you trust science, and science doesn't know what they're talking about. There's only a 0.5 degree warming. Actually, it's almost 0.2 degrees warming as of now. In fact, some studies show it's over 2 degrees warming, and some people believe it's almost 2.5 degrees warming. So, it's definitely not 0.5 degrees warming warming anymore. People haven't been keeping up with the science of climate change. And what is science? Because so many people disregard science as fake and not real. Well, if you're going to study the sciences, it takes a minimum of four years to get a degree in some sort of science, your basic science. Once you're finished with that, you go on to your specialty, which could be two more years or two more years plus four more years, depending on what kind of degree you're getting. So these people that are talking are very educated, have been going to school for many, many years, and know what they're talking about. They're the smartest people on climate change there is. One of those people are Paul Beckwith, who I just mentioned earlier. Now, he also has many degrees in science. He's a well-known science educator up in Canada. 
with a degree in science in laser optics, a bachelor's of engineering, and an engineering physics degree. So that's three different degrees that he had to go through. So that's a minimum of 10 years of education. Now, these people who say that science isn't real have the, sci the degree of Fox News, which has no degree at all, no credibility, and no credits. You couldn't say, oh, I watch 10 hours of Fox News every night, and I know more than these scientists know. No, that's not the case, because Fox News doesn't preach science. Fox News preaches whatever makes them money, and that's all. And right now, right-wing rhetoric makes them a lot of money, not science or degrees. And why do these very same people who say that science doesn't count in their own training for whatever they do for a living, their science, whatever degree they took, counts? And uh, that's what's so mind-boggling. They go into their four, six, or eight, or even ten years of training, and they think they know all there is to know about climate climate science when they didn't take any of that. So it's obvious that a lot of these people just come on and write mess, uh, posts on mine and other websites who who uh, talk about climate change and they don't know a thing about what they're talking about because they don't have a degree in science. Ask them. Ask them what kind of degree do they have in the sciences, in the sciences such as climate or 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 cloud formation, or weather, or tornadoes, or hurricane, whatever their specialty is. And these people know what they're talking about. They're the smartest people on climate change there is. So I was just blown away by how many comments I got saying that what I talk about and the charts that I show are bullshit. They're from satellites and from uh, radar and from planes. They actually take pictures of this stuff, but yet they still have denial on their brain. And there's nothing I can do about the denialists. It's just the people that are maybe on the fence that don't really know. Keep watching, keep looking, keep educating yourself on the science of climate change. And I think you'll find that climate change is real and is happening. And just because something isn't happening where you are doesn't mean it isn't happening such as the solar cycle on the sun. It's not happening where you are. It's happening on the sun. So does that make it real or not real? You know, it's just that simple, people. Just because it doesn't happen where you are doesn't mean it isn't real. And just because you heard it on Fox News or any other news outlet doesn't mean that they use science to come up with the conclusions you see on their videos. So I appreciate any comments you guys have any ups and you're de I definitely do appreciate the new subscribers and I'm sorry for the for the deniers but there's nothing I can say or do that will change their mind because they've already been convinced of it and their mind is completely closed locked tight not going to learn a thing and that's the way that is it's the way a lot of people function in this world that's why a lot of people don't get vaccines don't go to the doctor don't educate themselves because they know best home oh.